criticised this plan. They're saying it's unfunded, and they've set out its own promise, which includes a lot of help for pregnant women. Well, that's to talk to the other coalition partner in all this, the Liberal Democrats. Their health minister, Paul Burstow, joins us now live. Um, we've got to pick our way through this quite carefully because there's an awful lot of numbers which don't really add up to anything being banded around today. This £8 billion, pounds, would the, is it Liberal Democrat policy that you too would give this to the NHS by 2020? Well, there's an important difference between our position and the Conservative position. What David Cameron and the Conservatives are offering today are unfunded warm words when what's needed is hard cash. And what the Liberal Democrats have set out is a costed proposal for funding the £8 billion extra that will be needed by 2020 to make sure that the NHS can survive and actually continue to deliver good quality care for people in this country. How would you do it? Where are you going to take... What other departments going to suffer as a consequence of you giving more to the NHS? Well, that's a good question because uh, the Conservatives haven't answered that and they're not uh, committing to any uh, additional tax changes because of the fact that they, they are uh, committing to a position shrinking the state. Uh, let's park the Conservatives a minute. I'm talking to you. What decisions would Lib Dems make? Which government department would you take money from to give to the NHS? So the way in which we will fund our £8 billion commitment is in three parts. First part is in the budget that we've just had. We secured an extra £1.7 billion. That's now in the baseline of the NHS and will be protected for the rest of the next Parliament. Secondly, there are two tax changes that we will make. One is to scrap uh, reliefs on capital gains tax and the other is to scrap the Conservatives' shares for rights scheme. That will generate sufficient to provide an extra billion per year into the NHS. And then finally, once we've paid off the deficit, which we are committed Committed to do by 2017-18, then we will be able to invest the proceeds of growth that we will see in terms of tax revenues, which are forecast by the Office of Budget Responsibility in making sure that the NHS by 2020 has the extra eight billion. The Conservatives have set none of those details out, and Labour have confirmed today they either won't or can't do that. Well, well, we'll come to questions for Labour and we'll hear from their leader in the next hour of coverage today. So we'll qu question them in due course. Uh, I'm not sure where your 1.7 billion, a billion from tax changes and a billion from share schemes, even my elementary maths, doesn't come anywhere near eight. So, so the 1.7 is the starting point, which was in the autumn statement confirmed in the budget, and that's a, that will accumulate over the life of the Parliament. We then have the tax changes, which will raise an additional billion every year, and then we have the proceeds of growth, which the OBR estimate will generate the figures that we will need between 2018 and 2020 to reach the 8 billion. So we've set these out in great detail. They're there on our website. You won't be able to search on either of the other parties' websites for any costings of that sort. Um, and is you sure that the, um, when S Mr. Stevens, who made this prediction about being able to take 22 billion, he identified, didn't he, a 30 billion need by 2020, he thought 22 billion of that could be achieved by internal efficiencies and becoming a better at what they do. That's an enormous challenge. What if he messes up in that and can't achieve it? What in comes back to government and says, I need more money? It, it is a tough uh, and ambitious target that he has set out. Uh, the NHS has done remarkably well during the life of the last parliament to uh, provide those sorts of efficiencies. Uh, and we certainly uh, want to support Simon Stevens. And that's why we set out very early on our funded commitment to this additional eight billion to give the NHS that certainty. What the Conservatives fail to do today by spelling out how they will pay for their policy is actually that certainty. Warm words aren't enough. Hard cash is essential. Well, to be fair to them, they are in some um, Facebook postings I'm just scanning through now, setting out exactly their track record. And they're trying to ask us, they're inviting us to believe we did it last time, we made efficiency savings, and we found money for the NHS. So over the five year target, we can be trusted to do it again. I'm praising, but that's essentially their message. And, and of course that track record is the Liberal Democrat track record in government as well. But we recognise that actually the challenge the NHS faces over the next five years is greater than the challenge it's faced over the last five years. And that's why we've been honest enough and clear enough to spell out the details of how we would bridge that £8 billion gap. We're simply asking the Conservative Party to be as transparent as we are. Well, who knows, by the end of the day they may well be. Uh, Paul Burstow, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Let's just check on...